water blade keeps sticking. Uh, I reckon it needs a little more thrust. Stella, they're having another argument. Can you help? Thomas says I've got to wash my hands before I eat this sandwich. But look, my hands are clean. They might look clean, but they're not. Why? What's on them? They're all germy, covered in germs. I bet you don't know what a germ is. I do. It's like a bug. Invisible dirt. What? Can science and action investigate? I don't know who's right. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's all very well saying you wash to get rid of germs, but have you ever seen a germ? If you can't see germs, how do you know if they're there or not? Sounds like a good investigation for Trish. my scientific investigation. It's 2 p.m. in the afternoon and I haven't washed my hands all day. I'm visiting a hospital laboratory where I can find out just what's lurking on my hands. Are my hands really a germ zone? Andrew. Hello. Oh, better not, Trish. Oh, yeah, I forgot. When are we going to start this investigation? I want to wash my hands. Well, it's... Andrew Stacey is a microbiologist who can help me to find out just how germy my hands really are. So it's germs that we're looking for today, isn't it? Well, germs isn't a very scientific word. A better word is microbe. Microbe? Yes, these are small forms of life which are too small to be seen by the naked eye, but we can see them under the microscope. I'm just going to rub this swab over the, your hand and we'll pick up some microbes which we can then demonstrate. Okay. Okay, that's all finished. So that's it? That's it now. Oh, great. I can wash my hands. While I wash my hands and everything I've touched, Andrew prepares microscope slides using the samples he's taken from my hands. Microbes are all very small, but there are a whole range of different sorts of microbes. These are all one particular group called bacteria. We're seeing them magnified 1,000 times. There are different types of bacteria too. These pale pink rod-shaped bacteria are called bacilli. Guess where they came from? <laughs> This sample contains bacteria called streptococci, which usually live up your nose. Andrew, all that living on my hands? Yes, Trish, but don't worry. Even clean hands have millions of microbes on them, and they're not all harmful. And, of course, the hands aren't the only place where microbes live. Let me show you. Open wide. OK. <coughs> these bacteria live harmlessly down a normal healthy throat, or so Andrew assured me, but this is a sample from a sore throat. Bacteria which may be harmless on your hands can cause infection in your throat, so you should always wash before eating. So next time you see a sign like this, don't just think about it, do it. Still. It's all very well using powerful microscopes, but it doesn't really help you get a hold of just how small bacteria really are. A magnification factor of 1,000, 10,000, but it doesn't really mean that much to me. But I've had an idea. An ordinary sewing needle. And this is a needle too, a very big needle. In fact, this is just the very tip of the needle. 
The rest is down there. It's 250 meters long. Now, if I scaled up a single bacterium, as much as I have this needle, 5,000 times, how big do you think it would be? This big? This big? This big? It's this big. Bacteria are just one group of microbes. Some of them are much bigger. Scaled up 5,000 times two, an algae would be this big. A single-celled organism like an amoeba would be this big. But some are much smaller. Even scaled up 5,000 times, a virus would still be smaller than a fine pinprick. But there's another way of seeing these tiny things. They may be too small to see individually, but you can see large numbers of them. To live, bacteria, like all microbes, need moisture and warmth, and to feed and respire. There are plenty of bacteria in my saliva. This agar is a good source of food. And this incubator provides just the right warm, moist environment for bacteria to thrive. When in such good conditions, bacteria don't just survive, they also reproduce very rapidly. Bacteria multiply by splitting in two. You start with just one, then it splits into two, each of these, in turn, divides into two, and then two again. The numbers grow very rapidly. So just how quickly do they multiply? Imagine we started with one bacterium. After 20 minutes, it divides into two. After 40 minutes, there are four bacteria. After 5 hours, 20 minutes, 65,536. I thought 65,000 peas would have been a bigger part than that. After 7 hours, over 2 million. And after 12 hours, well, just how many do you think there are? 69,000 million. How many? What am I going to find in here? If you can actually see bacteria with the naked eye, there must be loads of them. After just 12 hours, there are many millions of bacteria on this agar, which could be a serious hazard. I'm keeping the lid on. So a single microbe can become a major hazard in some circumstances. Imagine turning up for an operation and facing this. Good morning, Trish. My name's Harold Ellis. I'm the surgeon that's going to be operating on you today, my dear. Well, hello, Harold, but where exactly are we? Well, we're in the old operating theatre as it would have been 150 years ago. Oh, gosh, what have I been laying on? Well, this is the old operating table that we always used to use. It's like a kitchen table. It's made of wood, yeah? It is just like a kitchen table. In fact, we often used to use the kitchen table. Oh, and sawdust. This is to stop the blood trickling down through the floor onto the patient's heads in the ward below. Right, OK, and I can see a This a is a very in ingenious there. machine full of a box full of sawdust. And we've moved that under where we were operating. And you can see there's the blood from the last patient we did. You see, and instead of going on the floor, I managed to catch it all in that box. But we we would change that between each operation, you see, so right. that wouldn't be for you. Talking of blood, what were the cutting instruments? 
Well, this is for, if we're going to cut off a leg, for example, that's for cutting through the flesh. We call that an amputation knife. It's a bit like a kitchen knife. It is a bit like a kitchen knife. We've got different sizes of those. Then to cut through the bone itself, uh, we use this saw. Very much like the sort of saw you'd use for... Yeah, my dad's cupboard. That's sawing cool up cupboard. a log, absolutely. Then when we finish the operation, we'd, we'd give the instruments a bit of wipe. No point in using a clean rag for dirty instruments. We'd get that washed at the end of the day. Washed? Oh! Well, at least you washed your hands. Yes, we used to wash in this hand basin, but we used to wash at the end of the operating list. At the end? Not before? No point in washing before or during, because we'd only get our hands dirty. Although, if they were really very bloody, I might wipe them on this old Ooh. apron of mine. Yes, I can see it's a bit bloody. There was no cleaning up between patients. You can see why it's called a theatre. These platforms would be crammed with onlookers in everyday clothes. Warm, moist blood, a warm atmosphere, ill patients, lots of nooks and crannies. The perfect home to a secret army of bacteria living and multiplying in perfect conditions. It may seem obvious to us, but 150 years ago, nobody gave a second thought about cleanliness and hygiene. No one had ever seen a microbe because modern microscopes hadn't been invented. So those dead little enemies were allowed to do as they pleased. And that was why there was a high death rate from infection. In fact, many of the people, over half, that came here for amputations, ended up dead. Mm. Oh, phew. This looks a bit more up to date. Operating theatres are rather different now. We know microbes exist, so we take the necessary precautions. Hello, Rog. Hi, Trish. Hi. Nice to see you. Last time we'll be shaking hands today. Yes, your hands have to be really clean, don't they? Yes, come and see me prepare. Roger washes his hands with antiseptic scrubs to kill all the bacteria. It's vital he cleans all the areas where bacteria might hide. All surgeons always have to scrub their hands for a full three minutes before every operation. These agar cultures show the difference thorough cleaning makes. This was grown from Roger's hands before washing and this afterwards. His hands are sterile, no microbes at all. The whole theatre is extremely clean, but in some areas it's more than clean, it's sterile. There are no microbes living here at all. Bright green means more than clean, green means sterile. All the green sheets and clothing are changed before every operation. Ordinary clothing produces a culture like this. But this is from a sterile gown. All the instruments are sterilised by heating to a very high temperature. This is a sterile scalpel, but this is grown from a dirty one. I'm just tying off a, a bleeding point. Because all these precautions against microbes are taken, Operating theatres today are fortunately much safer places than they were 150 years ago. So there's no need to worry. You're always in very safe hands. I don't care how sterile we all are. I'm out of here. Hey, Trish, come back. It's all right. He's washed his hands. Is that how we have to wash our hands if we want to get them really clean? It takes ages, all that scrubbing. Or you could buy those antibacterial cleansers. There's loads in the shops for your hands and your face. So what's wrong with soap and water? Stella, what do you think? Hmm. I've got a selection of products here myself. Which is best? This needs investigating. Hmm. Oh, let me see. Have you ever noticed spots always seem to come along when you could really do without them? Trisha Dudu, call to audition. That's me. Oh, great. Oh, my. Oh, a spot. Oh, why me? Just when I've landed this big audition, I go and get a spot. Everybody's going to be looking at my spot and not me. Why me? Why now? Oh, 
I can see you need help. Yes, I've got this big audition, Marie. I've got this big spot. I have been eating chocolate. I mean, could that have caused it? Well, it won't have been the chocolate itself, which is great news if you like chocolate, but a diet which is rich in uh, fresh fruit and vegetables will help with the healing process. But why today? I've got this big audition. Why has it suddenly appeared? Well, auditions, exams, even late nights will all cause more stress. More stress will cause spots. Why do spots happen? A spot happens with a natural oil on your skin and bacteria get trapped together in a pore. This pool of trapped fluid allows the bacteria to multiply and a spot forms. But if I wash and scrub my face really hard, can I get rid of all that bacteria and oil that produces spots? Will they go away? You should never scrub your face really hard because this will damage your skin. It will also strip off not only the bad bacteria, but the good bacteria, which does no harm. What about the antibacterial cleansers that you can buy? Mild soap and warm water are just as effective as the antibacterial cleansers. The main thing is to wash your face twice a day with mild soap and warm water. This way you'll remove the build-up of oil and bacteria on the skin, which can cause spots. So we know spots occur when too much oil blocks a pore and then bacteria gets trapped inside that pore. And it turns out that good old-fashioned soap and water can be just as good at keeping those nasty spots at bay. <gasps> Another one! But when you get spots, how do you treat them? What you can do is use a cream which contains the active ingredient benzoyl peroxide and that dries out the bacteria's natural home. Now you can get this from a chemist but ask for the pharmacist and they'll make sure you're going to get the correct type for your skin. And that the spots are gone? If only, unfortunately, they'll take up to two months before they'll start to show effects so you'll have to be patient. What do I do if it doesn't work? If they don't work after two months then you'll need to go to see your doctor. Now your doctor if the drying effect of benzoyl peroxide doesn't work, your doctor may prescribe antibiotic gels or tablets which kill the bacteria in the spot directly. So, the message is, don't put up with spots, they can be zapped. So, you've washed your hands properly, getting rid of dangerous microbes, but not harming your skin or the protective friendly bacteria too much. The big question now is, how do you dry them? Why not use a towel? A real towel or a paper towel? A real towel's OK if it's clean. But paper towels are always clean, as long as they've not been used.